Uh, I want to uh, I want to begin today by telling you a little story. Now, uh, it's something that happened to happened to us this week. Um, as you know, those of you who own a house, well, you need to have homeowners insurance, All right? Well, well, we we uh, we uh, we got a new policy, and the new insurer, I won't mention their name, but you you know. You've seen them on TV. Anyway, uh, they came by, the inspector came by, and he said, well, you, uh, you need to cut these limbs away from the roof of your house. I said, well, we said, oh, OK. Well, by the time we, long story short, by the time we got all that done, getting that done cost more than the claim we would have had had something <laughs> fallen on the house. Now, I don't know how kind of experiences that you guys have had with insurance, but, um, but it kind of reminds me of a story about this guy who went on a ski trip. And um, he was on a ski trip, he got hit in the head by the, by the chairlift. Hit in the head by the chairlift, and he goes to the hospital. But what he finds out when he gets to the hospital that that insurance company won't pay for his, his medical coverage. And he says, well, why won't you pay? He said, well, we won't pay because we think you're an idiot, and that's a pre-existing condition. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know you know. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> now, for those of you who who, uh, who, who listened to the show know that that's the joke of the day. <laughs> All right. All right, but today's, today's message uh, comes from the gospel according to Mark. And this, as we said earlier, this is our last, our last um, uh, message in this series. The gospel according to Mark, and, it's, and it is... Uh, contained in uh, chapter 15, verses 34 through 39. It's Mark 15, 34 through 39. Uh, and uh, if you will, follow along, um, and uh, we'll be coming back to this periodically. So it reads this way. It says, At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, behold, he is calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave him a drink saying, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom when the centurion who was standing right in front of him saw the way he breathed his last. He said, truly, this man was the son of God. And as we attempt to uh, unpack this and to pray with us, uh, and we will, we will attach to it a, a, for a theme, the question of sin. The question of sin. So we, so we ask, speaking of the question of sin, what, what, do, what do you believe uh, the greatest, not just your greatest, but the greatest sin problem to be? Uh, some, some might say that this greatest sin problem is, is murder. Some might say that it's rape. Some might say that it is something else, but but when you think of sin and, you're, and, you're, and, you, and you say, well, I, I think that is this. I think that is this. Well, just hold that in your head for a moment. Some people think it's uh, other things like pride. In fact, there's a minister who had preached a searching sermon on the subject of pride. And a woman who had heard the sermon waited for him uh, so, so, so to tell her that she was in a lot of distress, much distress in her spirit, 
uh, that she would like to confess her sin. And so the minister asked her what the sin was, and she said, well, well, it's the sin of pride. He said, I, I sat for an hour before my mirror some days ago admiring my beauty. And so, so the, the minister responded, he said, oh, that's not a sin of pride. That's a sin of imagination. I would not be that cruel. But personally, I believe that the greatest sin problem is the belief that there is no such thing as sin. And we may, we may think what, that, that we have a sin problem, and we all do, but, but the greatest sin problem in the world is that people believe now uh, that there is no such thing. So what does that mean? That means you are free to do whatever you want without fear of consequence. Why, why be shackled with the pain of guilt? Because sin, only the idea of sin, I should say, only causes us to feel guilty. But, but there was an event that happened more than 2,000 years ago that, that tells us that sin is a problem. And that, and that it must be dealt with. And what this passage tells us is that crucifixion, the crucifixion of Christ, answers the question of sin uh, by, by because of the bearing of our sins, the paying of our debt, and the bringing of the world into a worship relationship with God. He bore our sins, paid our debt, and brought the world into a, into a relationship with God. Our, our sin became a barrier even between Jesus and the Father. It was so, it was so great. It was so, it was so, so hurtful and so, 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 so all-encompassing in the world that it became a barrier for Jesus. Let me explain. When he said at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, and which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, when some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, behold, he is calling for Elijah. But why would Jesus feel as though he was forsaken? Why would he believe that he was forsaken? After all, isn't he the one who fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread? Isn't he the one who walked on water? Isn't he the one who raised Lazarus from the dead? All of that in the power of, 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 of God. So why would he feel as though he were forsaken? Let's put yourself in his place for a moment. If your child were to commit a murder and you took on the responsibility so that they could go free, wouldn't that be a heavy burden to bear? What if you had to do it for everyone in your family? Moreover, just imagine you had to take on the responsibility for every murder, for every adultery, for every lie, for every act of immorality, every theft, every idolatry, every act of violence, every debauchery, not only that was ever committed, but that would ever be committed. What if you had to take on all of that? And, and after that, how would you be able to stand before a perfect and holy God? You see, that same sin that, that Jesus carried to the cross, that same sin in our lives is a barrier between the true and living God and us. Those same conceits were a barrier between Jesus and the Father. Those same, those same pleasure-seeking behaviors were a barrier between Jesus and the Father. The same selfishness and pride, the same anger, the same hate, the same lusts, the same jealousies, the self, same self-interest, rather, uh, that Jesus experienced.